with Brian Fisher. Hi, and welcome back to the last segment of this first hour on this Wednesday edition of Focal Point AFR Talk. Number to call if you want to jump in on the conversation about yesterday's primary results in this Senate race in Mississippi. People all over the country have an interest in this thing. I read a dozen stories today from national media outlets, Washington Post, multiple stories in the New York Times, multiple stories in the Washington Post. This election, the talk of the uh, country, so the entire, uh, the, the eyes of the entire nation focused on this race. We'd love to know what you think about how this thing went down. 888-589-8840 is the number to call, 888-589-8840. And let's grab a couple of excerpts from... State Senator Chris McDaniel's post-election speech last night, obviously disappointed. But let's grab clip number two. Number to call again is 888-589-8840. If you'd like to be a part of the conversation. Let's listen to the first of two sound bites from Senator Chris McDaniel, his post-election speech last night. I want to be very, very clear. There is nothing dangerous or extreme about wanting to balance a budget. There is, there is nothing dangerous or extreme about defending the Constitution and the civil liberties therein. And there's nothing strange at all about standing as people of faith for a country that we built, that we believe in. But there is something a bit strange. There is something a bit unusual about a Republican primary that's decided by liberal Democrats. So that's Chris McDaniel, something strange about a Republican primary being settled by liberal Democrats. And I uh, was struck, as I'm sure you were, by the fact that the chairman of the Mississippi Democratic Party, Ricky Cole, just as unhappy with this as Chris McDaniel. He's not any happier about this result than Chris McDaniel is. He thinks this is a matter of honor. There's dishonor involved in having liberal Democrats pick the Republican nominee. Now, here is uh, clip number three, the second of two Chris McDaniel sound bites from last night's post-election speech. So much for bold colors. So much for principle. I guess they can take some consolation in the fact that they did something tonight by once again compromising, by once again reaching across the aisle, by once again abandoning the conservative movement. I would... I would like to know which part of that strategy today our Republican friends endorse. I would like to know which part of that strategy today our statewide officials endorse. This is not the party of Reagan. But we're not done fighting. And when we're done, it will be. So, Chris McDaniel, this is not the party of Reagan, but by the time we get done, we're going to keep fighting. By the time we get done, it will be the party of Reagan uh, once again. Now, clip four, this is Sarah Palin on with Sean Hannity last night. It's kind of an appropriate soundbite in light of what happened here in Mississippi, where you have establishment Republicans actively operating to submarine a Republican candidate using members of the opposition party to submarine a member, a candidate from their own political party. And I agree with Ricky Cole. That is a matter of dishonor. There's something shameful about that. There is something reprehensible about that. There's something beneath contempt about the ruling class Republicans, the Republican elite trying to sabotage and destroy one of their own candidates through subterfuge and even breaking the law by urging Democrats participating in a scheme to get Democrats 
to vote in the Republican primary. And uh, Sarah Palin has made her unhappiness with the ruling class Republicans well known. She does it again, talking to Sean Hannity last night. Governor, I've been making a distinction between conservative governors like like Rick Perry, like Rick Scott, like Bobby Jindal, Nikki Haley, John Kasich, Scott Walker, and the success that they have had using conservative principles and how they, in every case, have taken large deficits and turned them into surpluses, high unemployment, now lower unemployment, by a pretty, by a pretty large degree. But I've not been inspired by Republicans in Washington. You went as far earlier this week and, and late last week to suggest that if the Republican Party doesn't get their act together, you would consider moving third party. Explain. Well, if Republicans are going to act like Democrats, then what's the use in getting all gung-ho about getting more Republicans in there? We need people who understand the beauty of, the value of, allowing the, th the free market to thrive. Otherwise, our country is going to be continue to be over-regulated, driving industry away, driving jobs away. We're going to be a bankrupt, fundamentally transformed country unless those who know what they're doing and aren't going along just to get along with those in power and being today the Democrats, that does no good. So, yeah, if Republicans aren't going to stand strong on the planks in our platform, then it, it does no good to get all enthused about them anymore. I you know, that's going to be interesting to see what happens in the fall, because I think there are a lot of Republicans right now today very disturbed at their own party. A lot of Republicans that know that the GOP establishment conspired against them to undermine the candidate of their choice. They wanted a fair fight. Republicans, grassroots Republicans in Mississippi, they wanted a fair fight. That's all they wanted. They wanted it even, Stephen. They wanted to go mano a mano, straight up, your guy against our guy. They did not want um, intruders coming in and messing with the process. Ricky Cole, chairman of the Democratic Party in Mississippi, just as unhappy about this as grassroots Republicans. Intruders coming in and messing with the process and probably breaking the law uh, in the process. And so there's a lot of conservative Republicans today in Mississippi. I mean, they're looking at the leadership of the party that they belong to right now and say, why do I want to support these guys? Why do I want to give these guys any money? Why do we want to help them get their candidate elected in November when they were responsible for the defeat of a candidate that I like to otherwise, if they hadn't meddled, if they hadn't come up with all this walking around money to give out to Democrats to get their people out to the polls, our guy would have won. In a fair fight, our guy would have won. You guys basically cheated. That's the way they're going to think of the GOP establishment. And so it's going to be interesting to see uh, what that does for the Republican Party in uh, the state of Mississippi. I got to guarantee you there are a whole lot of people, a whole lot of Republicans in the state of Mississippi today, very, very unhappy with the leadership of their own party in the state of Mississippi and very unhappy with the leadership of their party in Washington, D.C. Well, let's grab a couple of phone calls. Let's go to Jim in Jackson, Mississippi. Jim, welcome to Focal Point with Brian Fisher. What's on your mind? Well, thank you very much. Uh, I heard the comment earlier that this is not the party of Reagan. I believe Mr. McDaniel said that. Yes. I think the sad truth is the Republican Party has never been the party of Reagan. I think that's why the Democrats are able to get so many people to vote for them, even though they support things like abortion and sodomy that the rank-and-file American does not support. Because the rank-and-file American feels in his bones that the Republican Party is about fat cats like Haley Barber. Everybody, that's, the, that's what we know that in our bones. And many of us have been forced to vote for the Republicans because of Democrats' evil support of sodomy and abortion. The, um, the comment earlier that um, I believe Mr. McDaniel made that uh, we're going to you know, fight and coming back, mm -hmm. the, the problem is that uh, the average Mississippian is just shut out of the process. Uh, you can look how the – you talk about the walking around money. You can look at what's going on in the Republican Party by seeing how so many people will support a man like Thad Cochran, and everybody knows about his lifestyle. It's no secret. It reminds me of when the Republicans back in the 80s, or it might have been the late 70s, early 80s, sent back to Congress a man who was a known park-cruising homosexual from the District of Jackson. They knew, they knew exactly what he was. They sent him back because they could control him. 
the Republican establishment in Mississippi has always been a bunch of fat cats and looks like it's always going to be. And maybe what we ought to do is, is uh, just hold our nose and vote for Childers this fall. Hmm. Well, you know, and, and that's what I think, Jim. I think a lot of people are, they're going to, you know, and they're going to cool down, I think, by the time we get to November, you know, because your point is, well, uh, you know, sometimes y- you kind of have to hold your nose and vote against the guy that's the party of abortion and the party of the homosexual agenda. And that's the, and, and maybe the Republican Party establishment, Jim, maybe they're counting on that. Maybe they're counting on the fact that we won't vote for a guy like Childers because we can't vote for a guy that supports abortion and supports the homosexual agenda. So they think we've got no place to go. So they're taking us for granted. They're just assuming that we're going to vote for the guy uh, just because he's not the other guy. And, uh, you know, I'm hearing enough frustration in you to maybe think about trashing the conventional wisdom and voting for the other guy just to send a message to the GOP elites. I will tell you, I was not real excited about Chris McDaniel. I voted for Chris McDaniel just because I'm so tired of Haley Barber and Thad Cochran and Trent Lott and that ilk sitting in Washington misrepresenting us. Well, you know, you're going to have a lot of company out there, Jim. I appreciate your call. Thank you very much for that. So it's going to be very interesting to see how all of this uh, plays out because you got an open primary in Mississippi. The Democrats have picked the uh, GOP nominee. Uh, Senator McDaniel won the Republican primary. Senator Cochran won the Democratic uh, primary. We've allowed the, in Mississippi, they've allowed guys that play for the other team to pick the Republican uh, starting uh, lineup. So it's just odd thing to me. The Democrats helped elect a guy that they think they're convinced they're going to lose to in November. They thought McDaniel was easier to beat, but they still went out there to help Cochran get elected, even though they believe they're sure to lose to him in November. So there's not even something rational Uh, about all of that. Maybe the Democrats are going to be happy with Senator Cochran because they don't see much difference between Senator Cochran and the average Democrat. Back in five.